Hey guys, look what I got. That's right, this is the new UMX PT-17 Stearman from Horizon Hobby. Uh, it's got AS3X. It comes fully assembled, of course, just like all these other UMX planes. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with them, you probably shouldn't be flying this plane. Um, unless you've got a long background in RC planes, because these are small, they're twitchy, and they can be a handful, especially if the wind picks up. Okay, enough talking. Let's open this thing up and see what we have going on inside. Alright, so here is what we have going on inside. As you can see, the landing gear is up here, rather than being attached to the plane. That's kind of a bummer. But we'll, we'll see how that goes, see how easy it is to take on and off. Doesn't look like it's a single wheel, so that could be okay. Over here we've got the charger, and we've also got the battery, which can come in handy, both of those things. Looking at the plane itself, it looks pretty good, except I noticed Let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Looks like the rudder's off a little bit. Yeah, in person it's a little bit more noticeable. But we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. I'm going to take it outside of the box right now and take a closer look. I was opening it up and I decided this is a pretty cool looking shot so I wanted to show you guys this and kind of embrace the moment before I took it on to the next step which is coming up next so my initial impression outside of the box is that this thing is way smaller than I anticipated it to be it looks small on in the video but this thing is downright tiny. In fact, it's somewhat comparable, at least without comparing it side by side, to my Mini Vapor in size. So much so, actually, that I think I'm just going to pull out my Mini Vapor and compare it to it, just for fun. Here's a nice comparison shot. Uh, if you're familiar with the Mini Vapor, you can tell just how small this plane is. If you're not, this might not help you that much, but I can't believe how small this plane is. It's cool, it's cute, but holy crap is it small. It has a really nice scale detail though, and the rudder doesn't look quite as bad as, as I thought initially. I may need to pinch this U thing here. And yes, to my critics, I don't always use the perfect terminology, but most of my viewers probably don't care, so eat that. I've got some nice scale decals here. U.S. Army. A little America going on there. Nice stickers. I like these little windshields here. There's a lot of little detail built into this plane that is, is really impressive. Of course, you got the radial motor here. And it may be one of the first radial motors. I'm not up on all that history, but that's, that's uh, pretty impressive. After comparing it to the Mini Vapor, I thought I would compare it to a plane that you guys know quite well, at least most of you. I know a lot of you guys started on the Hobby Zone Champ, as I did about four years ago, which I cannot believe that everything on this plane is stock except the tail section. Absolutely everything else is, which blows my mind. I can't believe that thing has survived everything I put it through. Anyhow, back to PT Stearman. This thing is so cool looking, but it is, as you can tell, compared to the Champ, which is not a big plane at all, just very small. 
All right, now I'm going to put the landing gear on the PT-17. So this is what comes in the landing gear bag. Got a little Velcro in addition to our landing gear. Upon closer inspection of the landing gear, I can actually see why some of the guys in the videos have been able to land on grass and get a little bit of a rollout. These wheels are, are actually fairly sized, fairly decently sized, and I could see these doing somewhat decent in grass. Alright, so I'm going to install the landing gear here. I'm going to give these a little pinch. Kind of wiggle that in there. Boom. Very easy. I like that too. When I fly my planes, I like to relax, have fun, and have things be easy. Alright guys, I have this bound to my radio, my DX6, and I am going to show you how the control surfaces move. First, I'm going to show you the ailerons. That's of particular interest to a lot of folks on RC groups because it seems like doing an aileron roll is pretty close to impossible compared to what's shown on the video. So I'm going to show you how these move. This is in high rates. I have added no expo. Um, everything's in the high rates. So this is the information you do with it what you please. This is high rates. So here's the rudder. As you can see, you can see better to what I was alluding to at the top of the video when I was saying that it was pointed to the side. Even if I move it that way a little bit, you can still see if I point it off to the side even more, which would hide that if it was straight, you can see that it's still pointed. So let's see what kind of movement we have on this control surface. So you can see there's a lot more going to the left than the right. And that means that I'm probably going to squeeze the U-horn or whatever that thing's called and or move it up a space. It does curl over just a little bit here at the top, a little bit like my B-17, but I think since the rudder is short enough, that's really not going to be an issue, especially with the added stability of two wings. Um, that's probably not going to be a problem. And with the AS-3X, that will also help smooth it out if AS-3X works properly. That's the if, because I kind of fight that a little bit on a couple of my other planes, the s Bach in particular. The more I fly it, the more I realize that is kind of an issue with that plane. So now let's take a look at the horizontal stabilizer. That one's fairly balanced. I may tuck that one in an extra, extra hole because there are folks that have these and I've flown them say that you need some down elevator because this plane flies a little tail heavy so ideally you can add extra weight but that's probably not going to work because there's not much room which I will show you here shortly. Here is a vertical look at the battery bay. There's a horizontal look as you can see this is the 35C battery which doesn't really fit all the way if you look in there, it's pretty much maxed out on space. So the 25C is probably going to be the best fit if you get it as far forward as possible and get in some down elevator. And of course, we'll see what happens after I actually fly it, but usually indicators like that are pretty accurate. So I know I'm going to put my battery as far forward as possible. Since we've got the battery in it, 
Let's give this a little bit of a throttle test or engine test. It's actually got some decent pull on it. And that's a good thing because I have a feeling. And of course you can hear the AS3X there. Those of you that don't know what that sound means, it's got this gyro in here, at least that's the simplified way of describing it. And it helps smooth out rough patches in the air. It auto-corrects essentially faster than a pilot could on the sticks. Alright guys, that is all I have in this review for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful, and with any luck, I'll get to be able to fly this very soon. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and thank you very much for watching.